Welcome to the Popular Podcast. My name is Philip. First things first, let's check the mailbag. Alvin C. writes, I'm going on a vacation with my brother, and we're arguing about some activities we plan on doing. I suggested we go see a movie, but he said that it would be a waste of time, and that we can see a movie at home anytime we want. He wants to cram our trip full of experiences that we can only get in the places we're visiting. I kind of want to just hang out and take it easy. A movie seems like a great activity to me. Am I crazy for wanting to use some of my finite vacation time to go see a movie? You know, Alvin, I recently went on a small vacation with some friends, and we actually went to a movie theater as one of our activities. We didn't see a movie there, but we talked about it, and we could have. I think it's great to go see a movie on your vacation. What is a movie if not a small vacation from your normal reality? Just tell your brother you're going to go see a movie. If he really loves you, he'll support your decision. And maybe he'll even join you. Maybe he'll even buy the popcorn. If he buys the popcorn, you should offer to buy drinks. Just be careful about how much you've already had to drink and hit the restroom before the movie starts. You can take turns going so someone can keep an eye on the refreshments in the theater. If you go to the movie by yourself and leave your snacks in the theater, you'll wonder if someone tampered with them while you went to the restroom. Have a great trip, Alvin. Dear Diarrhea, I recently went to Florida for vacation. I won't recount everything that happened, but I figured I'd share a few things. First of all, when you arrive in an airport in Florida, the airport really likes to let you know that you're in Florida. This airport was in Jacksonville, and the floors were all in aquatic colors and wavy designs. There were plenty of floor mosaics of sea creatures to be found, like one of an octopus with six legs. Planters and flower beds were covered in questionably native tropical plants, and there was a statue of a dinosaur advertising the local zoo. Apparently, there's dinosaurs at the zoo now. As we walked through an opening in the center of the terminal, an old veteran played a keyboard and sang Purple Rain, heralding our arrival. It was about midnight on a Thursday. What else? One day on our trip, we went to a brewery where the bartender said my voice sounded just like her friends who worked at another brewery. I didn't catch if her friend was a man or a woman, but I did tell her if their voice actually is like mine, that I bet he or she understands the feeling of people not being able to hear you even when it feels like you're yelling at them. We never went to the other brewery, so I didn't have a chance to find my vocal doppelganger and apologize in person. Another night we went to an arcade that served beer. One of the games we played allowed up to ten people, five per team. There were only four of us in our group, so some other guy ended up joining our team and coached us on how to play. He was very excited about all the rules and strategy. I felt overwhelmed by the game, and there was so much happening on screen, I had a hard time even finding my character. I have a feeling that the man who we played on a team with is still there now, trying to join up with other teams. Maybe if he wins enough games, some curse will be lifted, and he'll be able to leave the arcade. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks, Philip. Before we move on, I have some air travel tips that should save you some major headaches on your next flight. First up, if you're sitting in the aisle seat and the others in your row haven't sat down yet, don't buckle up yet. You're just going to have to unbuckle and buckle up again once everyone else has sat down. Next up, unless you're cool with paying to use Wi-Fi on the flight, save your analog entertainment until you're airborne. That is, if you have magazines or a book or maybe some movies saved on your phone, Don't turn to them until you're in the air and can't use the internet. Get all your internet and data time in before you have to shut those features off on your phone or your laptop or tablet or whatever. Your choices can be limited while flying, so do the things you can't do while flying when you can do those things. My hope is that these tips will make a night and day difference on your next voyage. Best of luck. Dear Diary, Here's some other things that happened in Florida. One day, we stopped at a restaurant to see if the rooftop was open, but it wasn't yet. Instead, we rehydrated with water on the first floor. 
I also ordered a brownie sundae. We came back to the rooftop bar later that night once it was open. It was one of those places with a lot of loud people and bulbs dangling on strings that crisscross overhead. Once we arrived, we just stood in a small circle for about 10 minutes without doing anything. Then we left and went home. The next day we went to a beach then watched the Kentucky Derby at some bar slash restaurant. The hardest part of the evening was figuring out where to cross the street because there was so much traffic. Another day we went kayaking around a series of sandbars. On our way out we paddled against the wind and with the current, and we came back against the current with no wind. It was difficult, especially when renegade jet skiers started zigzagging threateningly in and around us. One of them even yelled at my friend, Get out of the way, ass. That same night we took the ferry across the St. John's River and got some fresh caught shrimp for grilling shrimp skewers. My contribution was peeling shrimp and assembling the skewers, the hardest part being guessing how many pieces of all the ingredients I should include on each skewer to break even on everything. We ended up with some skewers that only had shrimp and onion, but it was still pretty close. The next day we did a bunch of walking around, including going to a Jacques Cousteau themed milkshake and waffle shop. There were other parts of the trip too. Vacations are fun, as is enjoying them with friends. Friends like you, Diarrhea. Until next time, Philip. Before we wrap things up, it's time for household tips. Clean your phone. I don't care if it's corded, cordless, dumb, or smart. No matter how clean or careful you think you are, you should clean your phone off. It's disgusting. Okay, that's all for another pop filler. Thanks for listening, and remember, you'll be fine.